I'm meeting today with Rebecca Yates, an insurance broker, who's going to talk to us today about the impact that divorce will have on your insurance situations, various kinds of insurance situations. And so, Rebecca, thanks for being here. Before we start, would you give everybody your contact information in the event that somebody has additional questions or wants your help? My name is Rebecca Yates. I'm with ARC Insurance Solutions, and my phone number is 801 five zero five fifty five hundred and I'm at extension one oh three. My phone number um, does not dial directly. Oh, I screwed that up, Eric. <laughs> That's fine. We can just, we'll just keep rolling and we'll <coughs> pretend like it didn't happen. Is it your brokerage or do you work for a brokerage? It's mine. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. But okay. because you had an extension I thought, well I wonder if she's like That's why I tripped on it because I was like maybe I yeah. shouldn't put the extension on there. We'll start over. I would agree. I'm meeting today with Rebecca Yates on the subject of the impact divorce has on your insurance situation or even your insurance situations because there's a lot of different things that divorce can affect when it comes to your insurance coverage. So before we begin, I'm going to ask you if you'd please give them all of your contact information in the event somebody would like to give Rebecca a call with additional questions or for any kind of help. Sure. My name is Rebecca Yates. I'm with ARC Insurance Solutions and we can be reached at 801 801- Five zero five fifty five hundred. And are you the brokerage itself? I mean, are you the owner of the brokerage? I own the brokerage. That's we have about nice. fifteen people at this stage, and we are growing, which is really fun. All right. Now, did I bring you over here so we could talk about uh, your brokerage? Absolutely. Yeah. No. no. We, <laughs> Rebecca and I have known each other for a long time, and I haven't spoken to her in a while. But when I thought I need to speak to somebody about insurance and someone who's knowledgeable. It didn't hesitate. I remember that Rebecca is smart as a whip on the issue of insurance. And before we start, sat down to make this video, she actually was saying, it's like, I like insurance because I like to help people. If that's a scam, I'll let you draw your own conclusions. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I know Rebecca. I do not have any insurance with Rebecca, actually, because I had my coverage before I met her. But I do like her very much, and I found that she's had, been able to answer every question I've ever had. So, Rebecca, what would you like to tell people if they weren't coming to buy insurance, if you were saying if a friend were getting divorced, mm -hmm. give any scenario you wish to choose. So if it's, if it's just been a come as a surprise, or if it's somebody who's actually saying, I'm going to be the one who files for divorce, Tell us a little bit about divorce issues and insurance generally, and especially whatever order you want to talk in. If your spouse is the one that your insurance, health insurance coverage, just health insurance, or vision or dental, if your spouse is the one you're covered under, what are some things you need to be aware of? Okay, well, first thing I want people to know is don't panic. So previously in insurance world, you had to have a lot of qualifiers to get new insurance and they could actually decline new insurance. With the changes in the regulation, that is not the case any longer. So do not panic, it will be okay. The second thing I want people to know is that you have the opportunity to make a shift and have it be your personal insurance policy. So if you're currently covered under your spouse's plan, there's a couple of things that can happen with the divorce. One, you can go on what they call COBRA. COBRA will allow you to stay on, depending on the situation, it could be 36 months. That's a very, very long time to keep the exact same insurance you have right now. It will be kind of expensive, so keep that in mind. The other thing is, with the changes in healthcare reform, now you can get individual policies that don't require individual underwriting. So if you wanted to have some really clear separation, I know in my divorce I didn't want to have anything to do with him, you can get an individual policy as well. Now, when you say without underwriting, for people that don't understand what that means, yes. why is that such good news? Well, previously, if you had a condition, for example, you had Crohn's disease, if you went to get an individual policy, they could actually say, you yeah, know, you're not healthy, we don't want to take you, and you would have to go to something called a high-risk pool. With the changes in healthcare reform, they can no longer do that. In fact, they can't ask you health questions. They can ask you if you smoke, they can ask you where you live, how old you are, and how many people are in your family. But they can't ask you if you've got any health conditions. And is that just because of the Obamacare regulations, those yes. are the things that change it? So in other words, it's much easier to apply for and your life isn't that invasive? Uh, that's not, a, it's not a, the process of getting it isn't as invasive as it once was? Well, it's a different invasive. Okay. So instead of them asking you what your weight is or what your family history is, now they're going to ask about your money, which is a different kind of invasive. And we actually find people are more reticent to talk about their money than they were to talk about their health. Huh, that's okay. That's interesting. <laughs> so let me get. So what if I? Okay. So let me give you an example. You've never, she hasn't heard this, but it's like, hey, I just found out that I'm 
uh, going to get divorced, my spouse has filed for divorce, and I am uh, insured through my spouse, mm -hmm. and I don't work. I haven't worked for 20 years. Uh, can I still get my coverage? Yes. I'm not employed. Right. Well, then why do they ask about my money? <clears throat> so with the health care reform changes, they put in a series of subsidies. There's actually two types of subsidies. So the first subsidy would help you with a lower monthly premium. So for example, if you had, if you were single and you didn't have any children you were claiming on your taxes, if you made between $15,000 and $46,000, now that could be in alimony, that could be in other types of support, divorce settlement, any kind of income can fall into that category, the federal government may actually pay part of your premium. So instead of paying $300 a month in premium, the government may come back and say, we'll pay 250 of that. So your amount that you write every month is only $50. And if you are an unemployed person, <clears throat> if mm -hmm. you're in that situation where it's like, I've been the stay-at-home parent, and I let all my skills get rusty, and I'm old, and nobody will hire me, I mean, can you get insurance uh, do they impute an income to you? So it's like, I don't have a job, but just imagine that I could work minimum wage. Can I still do that or do I have to have a job? So you have to have some type of income to receive some kind of subsidy. You can still buy insurance, but you may not get assistance from the government. Okay, so I can, I can, if I can find the company that will sell me insurance without a job, yes. because they don't ask about that, that's possible. Yes. Okay. Now the trick too is one of the other changes that complicated it a bit is that you have to enroll during a special enrollment period or during open enrollment. Open enrollment will be in the fall every year. They've just come out and said it will be November to January 15th or so in the next year. Or you can have something that changes in your life, a marriage, a birth of a child, a death in the family, moving to a new rating area. They actually just came out last week, Eric, mm -hmm. and changed divorce. And for those of you that are watching, this was made March 4th, 2016. Yes. So just last week, last it used week. to be that divorce was one of those special circumstances that exactly. could allow you to enroll after the enrollment period had closed. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Nope. Now it only qualifies if you're actually losing your insurance. So if you and your husband were on an individual policy together, it's not through his employer, and you decided to continue that insurance, the divorce itself would not qualify for you to make a change. You'd have to stay on the plan together for the remainder of the year. Or drop off the plan and, and take like, your chances. With a penalty and the risk that's inherent when you're not insured. If it's through an employer, however, that does qualify because you have a loss of coverage. Now, one thing that you probably ought to know is that the federal government sets everything up on very specific deadlines. So if you file your application before the 15th of the month, then it will be effective the first of the following month. For example, today is the 4th of March. If you were to call and say, let's get this application done, your policy would be effective the 1st of April. If you call me the 23rd of March, the policy may not be effective until the 1st of May. So there is a potential for a gap. You want to get on this sooner rather than later. Why would anybody want to keep COBRA coverage then? With all this new Obamacare, uh, making it easier and cheaper in, in many respects. Why, when, when's, what's a situation where people would find COBRAs to be a useful thing? So COBRA is going to have some additional benefits that you may not get in a personal policy. For example, if you had a Blue Cross Blue Shield plan through COBRA, you would have access to all of their blue card, you would be able to go outside of your network, and you could see 97% of the physicians in the state of Utah. If you were to go to a Regents plan direct, they don't have those same types of coverages. So while they have out-of-network coverage, there's no limit on it. So if you've got a condition <clears throat> where you have a very specific provider that you need to see, it may be beneficial to stay on a COBRA plan if that provider is covered there. Because if you don't go on, if you don't stay on COBRA, you're just having to start from scratch. Is that what you're saying? Or? You'll have to go to a physician that's in the network in an individual policy, and that may or may not be your physician. I see. All right. Um, when people get divorced, is is there are, are there insurance options they should consider that they should get? And what comes to mind would be, I'm getting divorced. Maybe I should get a disability plan where I've never had one before. Or mm -hmm. I'm getting divorced. Um, maybe I should get lots of insurance because I've got kids and 
I, you, we used to kind of we had we had two incomes, and we used to kind of think, oh, we'll just pool our resources or have a rainy day fund. But now it's just me, so I'm going to load up on vision and dental and whatever else there's. What what do you think about that? So I I tell single parents all the time, especially you need to make sure you have life insurance. And I do really strongly believe in disability policies, especially if you're earning the income for your household, because you never know. I had to use a disability policy because mm. I had an appendix leak. Wow. And it leaked for almost two years, and I was down for a good 120 days. Well, I was a sole owner. I have a disability policy, and uh, it's one of those things where it's like, well, I hope I never have to use it. But I'm glad that I do, and it does give me peace of mind. Yes. Uh, vision is probably something I, I don't recommend vision as strongly because vision is a type of product where you can go and get an exam for $75, and then you can go online and buy really cheap glasses. There's There are other alternatives. There are better ways to probably spend your money. Dental insurance? Depending you, you on got the kids. Case. Got you got three, four kids. Mm -hmm. What do you think? There are dental policies that would actually pay for themselves just the exams. Okay. So you know, dental can be very, very inexpensive and can be useful. I don't think it's necessarily a requirement for everyone though. Okay. Um, I think the most important part is making sure you've got your medical insurance in place medical and insurance. if possible life and disability. And why is it called medical insurance and why do we have people that talk about health insurance? Are there distinctions? It's actually the same. Okay. It's it's a, a little bit of a preference piece. Right. You want it to be about your health. Because or there are people that are sometimes like medical insurance because that's what the code uses. Mm -hmm. And so, and then they also talk about in the code hospital insurance. Is there such a thing as a separate or, or do most medical insurance policies cover hospitalization? Or? So with health care reform, they are required to cover hospitalization. It's part of the law. So if you are getting an ACA qualified plan, it does have to cover hospitalization. I would warn you, however, there are some plans out there that are not ACA compliant that oh. present themselves as being ACA compliant, which means you can be subject to a penalty, and those penalties can be 2.5% of your income, which is not That's pleasant. A lot. And when you talk about ACA, you're talking about the Affordable Care Act, Correct. or what people or call Obamacare. Obamacare. Mm -hmm. All right. Life insurance. Now, I think most people that are fairly intelligent will say, well, I, I, that's a no-brainer. But for people that might think life insurance might be something I can save some money on now that I'm getting divorced or something like that, what would you tell a divorcing or divorced person are the reasons to have life insurance coverage? Well, so typically when you've got a divorce going on, one parent or the other is paying child support, correct? Correct. And so I always encourage people to get life insurance to cover in case that person was no longer able to pay their insurance because they passed away or they were injured so severely that they could no longer work. So for example, I purchased life insurance on my ex-husband so that if he were to pass away, then my life insurance would cover what he would have paid in child support. That's a child support substitute. Mm -hmm. what about, and also another thing to keep in mind is if you're receiving alimony yes. for any length of time, uh, that won't that alimony won't survive the death of the payor. Correct. So if you're receiving alimony and then your ex dies, there goes your alimony. And so if you were counting on that for the next 10 years or whatever period of time, another reason would be to get insurance. Can Now, again, these are questions that may sound funny to you, but a lot of people may want to know. So let's assume you and I are married and we're getting divorced, okay. and I want to make sure that uh, you, whether, you pay, whether you pay child support or not, I know that if you die, I would like to have some money to substitute for the loss. I might have to take more care of the kids because if we share custody, you're not around to take care of them as much, whatever okay. it is. Um, can I own a policy on you as my ex-wife and pay for it out of my own pocket? If you get the policy before the divorce is finalized, oh. then you do have an insurable interest and they will typically allow you. Now, some carriers will allow you to get it afterwards because with the children, it can, it's considered an insurable interest, but you'll need to check with the specific carrier. And then do I have to make the children the beneficiaries of the policy or just have children? Not necessarily. Okay. So I recommend that you put it into a trust. Trusts are always the right way to go, um, but you're saying put the proceeds into the trust or have the trust Make the beneficiary. Them? Okay. The Make trust. the trust a beneficiary, not the kids. Right. And why is that? Well, that's a legal question, Eric. What, what <laughs> I you, am not a lawyer. What do you understand it to However, be? Yes. my personal understanding and the reason that my children's proceeds are put into a trust is so that I can make sure that the trust is administered to the benefit of my children instead of to the whim of my ex-husband. I see. I because want to if make he, sure So what you're saying is, for those of you that aren't following, if she dies and the children are the beneficiary of the policies and they're minors, the surviving parent will still get to control the money. 
But if you put it into a trust, you can choose your mom or your dad or your uncle. Or a or lawyer. Your, yeah, or a lawyer or somebody like that. Somebody you trust, somebody that you would rather have control of that, that Correct. sort of a thing. All mm-hmm. right. The other thing, too, with life insurance, just on a quick side note, is on occasion the children pass away. And it's a very, very unfortunate thing. When you've had such a terrible situation, you do not want to be arguing with your ex over money. True. If you've got a life insurance that will take care of some of those needs, it can help a very, very difficult time. What's it like to get a life insurance policy on a minor child? It's really not bad, actually. There's quite a few policies out there that are very inexpensive, mm-hmm. less than a dollar a day. Really? Mm-hmm. And can you get just a child death policy or something like that? You can. Typically, yeah. we recommend including an accidental death and dismemberment policy. And what that does is it protects you if the child is injured. Mm-hmm. So if, let's say, for example, they were in a car accident and they lost their right hand and an eye. It would actually give you that payout as well so that you can get some of those therapies and take is care of Is it about the same cost as a life insurance policy? Or? So an accidental death policy is usually added to a life policy, and it is less than a tenth the okay. price of a regular life policy. Um, is there any other insurance you think people ought to be aware of? What about renter's insurance for somebody that's suddenly displaced or something like that? I always believe in renter's insurance mostly because I have rentals and I've seen people have to use it for little things. You know, we had a break in. Mm-hmm. Somebody came in, well, you're not typically when you're going through divorce in a position that you can replace $25,000 of content in your home. And what does a typical renter's policy run if you're just living in an apartment, maybe like a two, three bedroom apartment or something? It depends like on the um, value of your assets, mm-hmm. but it can be as little as 6 to $15 a month. Very inexpensive. All right. This has been very, very helpful. And for a lot of people that are too afraid to ask, they don't want to appear ignorant, including myself. This is a useful thing. What else, if anything, do you think people ought to know about? Obviously, everybody's circumstances are slightly different from each other's, but what are some other things that you've seen people get burned by or people have been saved by because of their insurance planning? So one of the things I want people to know is that it's not as scary as it sounds. Um, If your spouse was always the one who took care of the insurance, there are so many videos online that can give you step-throughs, but also probably most importantly, brokers actually don't charge you to help. So you can call a broker, get some assistance, somebody who knows what they're doing is licensed, and it doesn't cost you extra. So you don't have to call the scary call center wait on hold for two hours. So you're like a travel agent of insurance. In other words, people can come to you and they don't have to pay you for your services when they sign up. Correct. So and we they can go and milk paid. you for a bunch of information and never come back again. Don't let that so out. Right. So do treat your broker kindly and that sort of a thing, but that's good to know. In fact, the reason I mentioned that is I remember is that the first time I ever used a travel agent, I didn't. I thought you had to pay them. Yeah. They, they said, travel agent, I thought, well, somebody who's helping me. And then I called them up and I was like, so what do I owe you for this? And they're like, nothing. That's so that's a good thing for people to know. And again, you might have thought, oh, I don't want to go to a broker. Yeah. Okay. So I appreciate you coming in here and telling us about these things. And if anyone would like to call you with some additional questions or actually says, yeah, I'm in the market for some insurance, please give them your contact information one more time. Okay. We can be reached at 801-505-5500. And that's ARC Insurance Solutions. And it's Rebecca Yates, everybody. Thanks so much. Good to see you.